Hey there, Nixtacus here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to open up WSL2 files and directories in Windows Tools. For example, let's say that you wanna open up a WSL2 directory in Windows Explorer, or maybe you wanna open up a JPEG in some Windows image editing tool. So we're gonna go over a couple of different ways to do that in this video, and we're gonna ultimately land on a nice little alias that you can run from your WSL2 terminal to open up any program on your Windows system path. So before we get cracking here, let's just make sure that we are running WSL2. So you can run WSL.exe dash dash version here to see that. If you get a command that found, that means you are running WSL1. Um, in the case of this video, at the time I recorded it, version 2.3.24.0 is the latest version. You can always go over to GitHub here for WSL releases here. And of course, if you watch this video in the future, a newer version is going to be released here. Now, if you're running a really old version of WSL2 here, you can always run dash dash update, which will get you the latest version. But typically, Windows would be installing these updates on your behalf here. You know, in my case, I'm already running the most recent version. Now, Second to that, there is going to be another tweak that you'll just want to make sure that you didn't do explicitly on your behalf here because there is a certain WSL.conf option here that will make this not work. Now, things are going to work out of the box. It's not related to anything that's set here. But yeah, I just wanted to make sure if you go over to the Microsoft documentation here for the interop settings here for WSL, these two are very important to not have set to false here. So, you know, enabled uh, in this case here would be, you know, whether or not WSL can even launch Windows processes. So if that's disabled here with false, then you know this is not going to work. So you want to make sure this is uh, set to true or more specifically not even set at all because the default is true. And then also there is this idea of a pending Windows path. It's another custom option that you may have set to false, you know, potentially. But in this case here, this is actually going to add a number of different Windows paths to your WSL2 path here. And with this set to false, those paths are not going to be there. And then things are also not going to work. So yeah, just make sure that both of these are set to true or not even set at all. Now there is also one other thing in this config file that I guess is worth pointing out here. You know, I've got my auto mount setting here for root equals uh, just the root directory here, you know, just slash. That allows me to go to like CD slash C like this, and that is going to be my C drive. But by default, if you do not set that, then it's going to be in mount C. Now, in my case, mount C is empty. Um, typically, by default, this is where all of your C drives would be listed here. Mine is in slash C instead. Now, we are going to be running some commands here where I am going to be using slash C. If that does not work for you, you know, if you did not set this already, then uh, just replace that with mount C, and then you'll be good to go. Cool. Okay. So that's basically it when it comes to uh, the setup here. Now let's just uh, launch some programs here. So, you know, let's say that I want to go to my .files directory, which is up on GitHub, and I just want to open up this directory in Windows Explorer. So I can just run explorer.exe here on the current working directory here. That is going to launch Windows Explorer. Let me just resize this so it's nice uh, on the video here. Of course, you know, font sizes are going to be super uh, small now that I have a 4K monitor uh, to be determined in the future. I may make some videos about that. But uh, yeah, in this case here, you know, it just opened up this current directory in Windows Explorer. You know, you can even pin things here in the quick access just by dragging stuff over, and then you are good to go, which is quite nice. And all I really like to do there, or all you'll have to do here is just run the tool with that .exe there and then uh, whatever you know path in this case the current working directory in fact you know when we ran this WSL command here you know the version command we were already doing this so within five seconds of the video or whatever we were already running some Windows programs from WSL2 uh, but yeah in this case here you can also autocomplete things like if you just you know type in you know explore like this and hit tab things are going to autocomplete there which is also quite nice here um, but yeah how does this actually work well that's related to your system path so if we go to echo path here uh, notice that there are quite a few different paths here related to Windows. You know, just look for the capital Windows all over the place here. But uh, yeah, these two are the ones that are doing about 95% of the work here. Uh, we can see the Windows System 32 path as well as the Windows path itself. So if we go over here and let me just open up Explorer and we'll go to the Windows path uh, directly here you'll see there are a couple of binaries installed or, you know, located in this here. For example, you know, explorer.exe is there. So, you know, this is on our system path because if we go back to here, you know, Windows is on the system path so we can then access explorer.exe. Now, if we go back to Windows Explorer and then we go to the system32 directory here, uh, there's going to be even more binaries there. These are all like, you know, binaries available to Windows themselves. Yeah, if we take a look here, you know, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but uh, yeah, if we do like a sort by name, I guess we can see you know, all sorts of different things. For example, where is calculator, right? Starts with a C, is that over here? No, it looks like it's gonna be down more, up more, mm, almost there. Uh, yeah, there it is, calc.exe. So like if we were to just go here and just run calc.exe, then uh, notice how it turns green, valid command, I'm gonna run that. 
And there is our calculator. So, you know, as long as the binary is some Windows binary, then, you know, those are all going to work just out of the box. You can run things like Notepad or MS Paint if it's available, you know, things like that. But what happens if you try to run a program that's not in any of the Windows paths? For example, you know, if you have Chrome installed, you can't just run Chrome.exe here because there is no reference to where Chrome is installed. Now, for example, you know, there's a little bit of a spoiler, but it turns out, uh, I guess, you know, this directory was inserted here. So, you know, we could just do basically this, but for the Chrome path, for example, in my case, you know, if you installed Chrome in its default location here, uh, let me copy this path here. I just have a little bit off screen as a note here. But if you run this directly, yeah, that, that's, that's going to open up Chrome here. You can see Chrome has been launched. Uh, and there it is fitting on the screen. Uh, but yeah, in this case, it's the full path to where Chrome is in Windows. So in this case, it's like program files, x86, Chrome, blah, 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 blah. You know, we need to escape the uh, spaces here as well. But typing this by hand would be really annoying, especially if you're launching Chrome all the time from the command line, which probably wouldn't be the case. But again, you know, replace this whatever program that you're using. So, you know, we can just set up a little alias like this, right? So now we can just run Chrome without the .exe, right? Because we just set the, the alias like that. And that's going to launch Chrome like this. And that's pretty cool, right? There it is, nice on the video. Cool. Uh, but that's also kind of tedious too, because, you know, let's say that you want to launch Chrome, but you also want to launch some image editing tool and you also want to launch this other thing and the other thing and the other thing. Uh, before you know it, you have all these different aliases that you need to start or start creating here, which is a little bit annoying. So instead, what we could do is just uh, use cmd cmd.exe, which is a Windows tool here. And uh, we can say, you know what, I actually want to start a program. And I'll leave a tooltip exactly what slash C is. I actually don't know off the top of my head here, but it allows us to run any program that is on the Windows path inside of WSL. Um, in this case, we can just run Chrome and then we can see Chrome was uh, ran like this. We can run calculator, right? And then it is going to launch the calculator. We can run something like FUBAR 2000. Well, at least I can because, you know, I have this program installed and it's a really nice MP3 player that I've been using since uh, a really long time. But yeah, there it is, nice and running. I can do whatever I need to do here. Notice though that this is outputting quite a few bits of lines of text here. It's a little bit noisy. We can actually uh, make that go away just by redirecting standard error to devnull. So we can just go to devnull here and then we can run the command here. And now, you know, FUBAR got launched here and uh, we didn't get any output here, which is quite nice. Now, this is also sort of kind of long to type, right? CMD dot blah, 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 and whatever you know, tool that you want to do here. But if I actually go to the dot files directory here uh, into my aliases, then I did add an alias here somewhere uh, for w open, which is going to just alias that out even with the redirect to dev null here. And what that's going to allow us to do now is just type in w open. In my mind, that's like windows open, like we're opening a windows tool. And then we can just type in whatever tool that we want. For example, you know, if we go back to here, I can do w open Chrome. And then that's going to open up Chrome here. We can see, you know, all the dev null redirect is happening here. We're not getting any outputs that we don't want. So that's basically it. I mean, you know, this is the end game solution here for opening up, I would say, almost anything that you might have installed. Now there are going to be some edge cases here. For example, you know, if you install the tool in a non-standard location within Windows, like, you know, it's not installed to program files somewhere. Maybe you chose, uh, I don't know, like an external drive or something like that. That is not going to be on your Windows system path by default. So that is not going to work when you try to launch your program like this, right? So in that case, you know, then you'll want to maybe make a custom alias for that or do whatever you need to do here, you know, make sure that it's available on your path here. Or maybe, you know, there's some Windows configuration that you can do to put it on your Windows system path, in which case then this should work here where you can just launch any program. And then it doesn't really matter where it is as long as it's on your path, it's going to work here. But yeah, let us know in the comments below, like what type of programs are you going to be launching this way? And uh, if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. With that said, if you liked the video, please give a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.